Ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. That's the uh, Kool-Aid man <laughs> friend, Powerade man. <laughs> <laughs> the <a> dumb joke. <laughs> yeah, <it was. laughs> I still laughed. Yeah, you did. I always say it when I laugh at the dumb ones. <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes the dumb ones are the best ones. <laughs> everybody and welcome to Book Retorts. I'm Danielle. I'm Sam. And this is the podcast where one of us explains a weird piece of media to the other who has no experience with it. Danielle, we yes. have for once fulfilled our premise. I don't know what you're telling me about. I'm as blank as a slate as the one that Moses brought up to Mount Sinai before they were etched with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> so etch okay. upon me your wisdom. <laughs> Uh, it's not that exciting, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just came up with that. I'm pretty proud. <laughs> it was it was great. Uh, we've done a lot of Moses uh, concept things lately, and are, we're going to run with it, apparently. <laughs> uh, I think two. <laughs> All right. So today, Sam, hopefully you have not watched it in the interim since we talked about it months ago. Uh, we, <laughs> I don't know why you would have. We're doing the classic Sandra Bullock movie. <laughs> Is this? Late- wait, 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 wait. Is this a sequel to The Net? The Net 2? Nettier no, than not. ever? Sandra Volk, I don't think, is in The Net 2. Didn't we look that up at the time oh, that we there did is The Net? There is a Net 2? I can believe Rihanna. We, talk- <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that. I'm, I'm sure we did. And I just like blocked out because who cares? I'm almost positive that was a thing that existed. Oh, okay. Sorry. Wow. Um, I have to watch that. <laughs> okay. Apparently, we're going to watch Net 2. Maybe Sam will do it for the podcast because I have Net not seen 2, it. Net 2, Electric Boogaloo, which makes a lot more sense for that movie than for Breaking. <laughs> for other things. Yeah, it does. No, Sam, oh. do you have any other guesses? Are you um, good? Is it Miss Congeniality 2? No, but that does exist. I know. That's why I guessed it. <laughs> and I haven't seen you that haven't, one. You haven't seen Oh, well, maybe we'll end up doing another Sandra Bullock movie. <laughs> I saw the first one because it's a classic. But <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, that'll that'll set you up well for the second, I'm sure. Uh, so no, I remember it. We're doing the 2006 classic, The Lake House. <laughs> oh, The Lake House. It's a, is that the one about the giant alligator? No, it's yes. Lake Placid. Okay. Yeah, same thing, really. Okay. I want to see Sandra Bullock fight a giant alligator. I mean, I would watch the heck out of that. Yeah, I would, that's I why would I said it. I watch most things Sandra Bullock does. That's true. She is very charismatic. I am, I, I'm going to send you this, Sam. Is this the description, little summary. Danielle? Yes, okay. it is. It's a very Great. short one because it made me laugh when I read it. You have to give me descriptions that provide absolutely nothing. I try to give you something that at least gives you a clue. <laughs> I think it's funnier when it, the, I think it's funnier if we look back at my descriptions at the end of my stories. I think you'd find them as funny as I do <laughs> because you're like, wow, that told you nothing. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's get this one sentence description over with. <laughs> when a woman begins writing letters to the man who lives in her former home, they start to fall in love, but the timing isn't quite right. <laughs> so I, you know what, that triggers me. I do know that this is the one where she writes to the guy back in time, right? I'm not telling you anything. Yeah, I remember that much about it. And I get it confused with that other movie where the guy, where the girl dates Napoleon. No, it's not that one. And that is Kate and Leopold. Kate and Leopold, whatever. <laughs> I knew that they're like, they're, they're these two time travel rom coms that I constantly like, they're the same movie in my head. <laughs> Okay, well, they are definitely not the same movie, but I think I actually read a review that referenced Kate and Leopold when I was reading about The Lake House. Sure. Oh, I, I know that they're not the same movie. I'm just saying my head's like, I don't need to take up space remembering two time travel rom-com movies, <laughs> so they're the same really. thing. <laughs> yeah. I would argue this is not a rom-com so much as just a romance. It's not What's funny. What's the difference? It's just not funny? Okay. <laughs> it's not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> got it. Okay, good. Every time I watch this movie, which is just randomly, like, I never go out of my way to watch this movie, but I will see it on TV or something and watch it. And I'm like, what? This is not that good. <laughs> like, why am I watching this movie? <laughs> and yet you always watch it, which I gotta say, I don't know what it says more about you or more of the movie. But it's just one of those easy to have in the background movies because you can kind of like look up and yeah. be like, wait, what's going on again? <laughs> yeah, but so is Die Hard, which is an amazing movie. Yeah, but it's whatever's on TV, Sam. Sometimes Die Hard's not on TV. And in this day and age, you have no capability of choosing what goes on your TV. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just hard. Sometimes I'm watching cable. I'm not personally in my house because <laughs> I'm a millennial. I don't have cable. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get this in. Let's get into this non-rom-com. 
about letters to the past, or if, I don't remember which one is which. So let's find out. In today's episode, Danielle tries to get Sam to enjoy her rom her romance movies. <laughs> It's good for you. I mean, it has Sandra yes. Bullock in it. We needed the third Sandra Bullock movie. What was the second one? We did The Net and we did Bird Box. Oh, I forgot about, I forgot she was in Bird Box because that movie yeah. is so unlike the other ones. <laughs> usually, like, <laughs> it is I always a thing imagine that her, exists. <laughs> you know, but I always like think of her movies like fun or at least like, you know, not weird and dour and her playing someone who was completely unlikable because she's so charismatic. So, Well, she did a great job playing somebody unlikable in Bird Box. I think she's a great actress, don't get me wrong. I just always think of her as someone who is very likable in her movies. Well, she's, uh, I mean, she and her co-host certainly carry this movie. I'll tell you what. <laughs> her her co-host? Yeah, we'll get there. Co-host, not co-star. <laughs> co- co-star, co-host. When okay, guys, I, I, I was worried that like there was like some kind of alien situation where she was like hosting, <laughs> like, you have two people inside of you. One of them is in the past, and you were writing a letter to yourself in the past, and you were hosting Maybe- like... She's a news anchor or something, Sam. You don't know. You know what? You got me there. All right. Well, I'm never going to find out unless you start telling me about it. Okay. Sandra Bullock with the dog. Sandra Bullock with the dog. Leaves a house entirely made of windows on a lake. She's exiting exiting the house, Sam. Entirely made of windows? So like no roof, just windows all Oh my gosh. There's so many windows in this house. (laughs) (laughs) And no curtains. It's like my nightmare. (laughs) It must be on the like woods away from everyone. Otherwise, no thank you. It's on a lake, Sam. So yes, it is in the middle. It's literally no, on a lake. It's can, on can still. Can lakes not have more than one house on them? <laughs> I didn't know lakes could only one house per lake, Daniel. I didn't know that rule. As far as I can tell, there are no houses for like a mile each way. And it's just on stilts in a lake. Okay. Well, the house is literally in the lake on stilts. It's not just like on the shore. No, it's literally in like it's on stilts. It's not super far from the like edge of the lake, but it's definitely in the water. <laughs> okay it's called wow, the lake is... house they were not joking <laughs> that's great i love that that name is so much better when people say lake house they usually mean yeah my house is like does that make all houseboats on lakes lake houses maybe i'm gonna declare that so all right everyone who has a houseboat on a lake you can refer to that as your lake house from now on now, now you know everybody you have my permission so san <laughs> sandy puts a letter in the mailbox as she leaves the house and she drives off and as she's driving whoa, whoa, off whoa 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 Sorry, quick question. She gets mail service out there? Like the postman comes Absolutely. out to her, 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 her in the middle of nowhere house, miles from civilization. I and imagine there's several houses. I think there's several houses on the lake, but she has a mailbox. I don't know if the mailman ever – I've never seen actual mailman, I'll be honest. So maybe they don't deliver there, but maybe they I'm did just once. saying – uh, a postal carrier is like, you lived in rural areas. Usually there's like a, a, a collection of post boxes on the road somewhere that's a little far away from all the houses way back in the woods that everyone has to take their mail to. Sure. But in this case, there's just one sitting outside of the house. <laughs> Never. No, nope, don't buy it. That that poor postal carrier, that is the worst job. <laughs> Maybe they loop the, the lake. I don't know. So as she's driving off... A blue pickup truck pulls off a side road and drives down the same road she just left. So she's leaving, they're going, and they the blue pickup truck arrives at the house. Guess who it is, Sam? Sandra Bullock. No, what that would be that'd be <laughs> hilarious. But no, <laughs> I can actually see that happening in this movie. That's not what happens. <laughs> Do you tell me who else was in this movie? It's Keanu Reeves. It's Keanu oh, Reeves. Keanu Reeves. I, oh, Keanu. Oh, gosh. Why did I not know that was Keanu? I knew that. I knew that in the back of my head somewhere. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Yay, Keanu. So back to Sandy. She's in a hospital and is apparently a doctor, and she's starting a new job. Her name is Dr. Forster. We still do not know her first name. <laughs> Back to Keanu, he's at a construction project. It looks like apartments or housing or something. And some woman is yelling at him about food and how he just bought a house. And she's wondering why he would buy a house made of glass on stilts. There's no privacy, Keanu. What's that to do with food? Uh, There's just a combination of things. She's like, let's get food. There's a house. Like, she's just yelling nonsense at him. (laughs) All right. They clearly have some sort of relationship. What the relationship is, who knows? (laughs) Is she, like, of a similar age, or is it, like, a motherly figure? No, it's a similar age. Got it. She makes, like, one other, maybe two other appearances in the entire film. I'm not sure why she exists, to be honest. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I'm sure she <laughs> appreciates existing, as most people do. <laughs> she plays a, as a minor role later. So, back to Sandy. Her name is apparently Kate. And that's it. That's a scene. That's what, that's what we Forrester? find out. <laughs> Kate Forrester. 
<laughs> I feel like that, that name, I've heard that name before in a different Maybe context. Maybe you've seen this movie. <laughs> what was the guy's name in Finding Forrester? Not Kate. Okay. I could be we wrong. We don't know that. <laughs> it's been a hot minute since I saw Finding Forrester. I was on an airplane many moons ago. <laughs> I don't know if I actually ever saw that movie. <laughs> I cannot tell you what it's about. I'm blank. I'm getting confused with Goodwill Hunting for some reason. Okay, not the same movie. I, I know that, Daniel. That's why I'm getting confused. <laughs> I know they're not the same movie. <laughs> All right, moving on. Meanwhile, after we find out her name is Kate. Finding, it, finding Kate Forrester, got it. So meanwhile, Keanu picks up his mail and um, from the mailbox in front of the lake house and carries a box of stuff into the house. And you get a voiceover of Kate reading the letter that he just picked up because that was what he picked up was her mail that she had Dear stuck in Dear Keanu, letter. you're so dreamy and this house has no privacy. Come, let's put on a show for all the woodland creatures. None of that is in that letter. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the subtext, though. No, she doesn't know. Okay, I'm going to spoil this. She doesn't know Keanu yet. <laughs> no. All right. So I'll all she's guess. saying is like, you know, future inhabitant of this house, welcome. Um, she basically wishes him well and asks him to forward any mail that the post office misses and includes her address that she's at. And she apologizes for the paw prints by the front door that they were there when she moved in. And also the box in the attic was there as well. So she So she it. were the paw prints in concrete or something? Uh, no. They're then why like, can't they be cleaned? <laughs> they're, it's like a paint. It's painted uh -huh. on like the, basically they're paint, like the dog ran through some paint or something. Yes. And I've learned anything about paint. It can never be removed or painted over. Maybe she liked it. So she kept it. Yeah. But then why is she apologizing about it? Yeah, she's just letting them know that it wasn't her fault that there was footprints all over the front of the house. To the, I don't know, the pier to the uh, house. She seems very defensive about her, this place. Okay, it matters, Sam, because of the plot. Well, you can, like, we'll get there in a second. <laughs> I'm just saying, no buyer in their right mind would not have like at least seen the house and be like, okay, I see there are paw prints. I get it. You don't need to apologize. Wait for it, Sam, and then it'll make more sense. <laughs> I don't think I will, Danielle. I'll jump to conclusions. Thank you very much. <laughs> So Keanu reads the letter. He's like, what the heck is she talking about? And he goes outside to look for the prints, um, having not noticed them earlier. And they are not there. And neither is there a box in the attic. So he thinks that this letter is wild. So in the future, or whatever, in the near future of the story, Keanu is uh, painting the railing of the boardwalk to his house. And a dog, looking mysteriously like Kate's dog from earlier, runs down the walkway, stepping in the paint and tracking paw prints all the way down the weird pier that leads to the house. <laughs> Mysterious, Sam. I have a stipulation. Ooh, yeah. The dog's a time traveler. This is going to be like R2-D2 in the Star Wars saga, where he's the linchpin that ties the whole story together. Uh, yes. Time traveling dog who is trying to crossbreed two very beautiful people to make the uber human that will then pick up his poop. Or maybe the dog is crossbreeding with itself in different timelines. No. How does that work? <laughs> Maybe there's two of them, yeah, Sam. But I don't know. Um, I mean, assuming it's still a dog and not an alien, you can't have two dogs. You can't self-impregnate. Well, okay, you know what? Get through this Get through this movie and you tell me how many dogs there are and whether or not they can self-impregnate. <laughs> this movie's going to take a very dark turn. This is going to Jurassic Park territory. I was not expecting that. So Kate's having lunch with her mom. It's like an outdoor plaza. Uh, this is set in Chicago, by the way, to give you a feeling for the city that they're in. The city with lakes. Chicago. And, a lot of lakes in Chicago. I mean, yes. I have no idea. <laughs> Outside of Chicago. Sure. So it's not in Chicago. It's a suburb. I think the people of Chicago would be offended by that. I mean, Chicago is pretty close to Lake Michigan, which is well known for its lakes, for example. <laughs> well, Lake Michigan is a lake, so I imagine it would be well known for being a lake. There's lots of lakes. There's, you know, Huron, Ontario. Michigan, Erie, Superior. Yes, but what about Lake Inferior, Danielle? Uh, nope, there's just Superior, the best lake. Lake Superior is great. <laughs> well, I mean, it seems very full of itself, so how good can it be? My opinions on the Great Lakes are um, virtually non-existent compared to yours. Okay, yeah, well, my Midwest upbringing suggests that I do have opinions on the Great Lakes. Which seems like a wild, like, like who cares, but go on, <laughs> that you do you. <laughs> Clearly, you didn't live in the Midwest. I mean, that's obvious. And I, I'm sure I have opinions about things that no one else would care about. Absolutely. In any case, they're in Chicago. So they're talking about her father who, is, who had passed away. Uh, and there's, like I said, they're talking in this outdoor plaza having lunch together. And suddenly, a bus crashes into a person in front of them. Just murders somebody? <laughs> Just murders somebody. Oh, no. And Did you have to go, like, doctor and I save know. them? Like, I'm a doctor. I can save this person. Absolutely. She runs across the plaza and they're like face down on the ground. She's calling 911 on her cell phone, which is a nice little flip phone because this is 2006. 
and then she starts to perform, you know, emergency services on the person. Unfortunately, we find out later that the the person didn't survive. Well, they got hit by a bus. I think they were pretty unlikely to survive. But it does spark everything that moves forward because, as we'll see shortly, <gasps> like why this is important. Okay, time traveling alien murdered by a bus passes power on to Center Bullock before he died, Green Lantern style. Absolutely. This actually switches to a sci-fi movie. Perfect. Shocking. So the head doctor at the hospital, when, when she's working under, is trying to comfort her. And it says to her, basically, like, I tell this to every new doctor that comes in, get away on your days off. Like, do not dwell on your work life at home. Like, have a, have a social life. Have things outside of this, because that's the only way you're going to survive being a Also, doctor. don't beat yourself up about not saving a man absolutely flattened by a bus. Absolutely, but she is doing so currently. And so she's like, basically, like, go to a place where you feel most like yourself. And so you see her, after all this going on, you see her driving to the lake house. And she checks the mailbox, I assume, to see if her letter was taken by a new owner. Wait, she goes back to her lake house? She goes back to the lake house. So she goes back to the lake house to see if the letter was taken, even though she still lives there. She doesn't live there. She was leaving. Like when she left earlier, remember she le- left the note saying, I moved. Oh, so it's even creepier. She goes back to the house that she left and presumably there's someone else living there now just to check their mail. Well, she goes back because the doctor says, like, go to a place where you feel most like yourself, like to recenter yourself because you just had this traumatic experience. And so she apparently feels most like herself at the lake house. So she drives out. She doesn't see anybody there. So she checks the mailbox to see if her letter has been taken. She doesn't know that anybody's moved in there that, yet. Uh, I mean, I still feel that's like... I don't think she's going to like go in the lake house. She's just on the, the road that goes past the lake house. I don't know. That still seems sketch to me. <laughs> you would know if somebody was in there that there's all windows, no curtains. Yeah, and you would know when they suddenly step out of the shower and you get a full shot of them. <laughs> okay, I don't think that's how that works. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said the place was covered in windows. It is. I should show you a picture of it. <laughs> then how would them step out of the shower and not give you like the full frontal? I mean, I'm sure the bath. I'm sure there's rooms inside of the house, Sam, that don't all have window to wall to wall window access. I'm going to say no. So for whatever reason, there's a letter from Keanu in there. Maybe it was going to her other address. Maybe he was waiting for the postman to pick it up. I don't know. And whose name? I assume I've missed at this point because I don't know his name yet (laughs) we're pretty like we're several minutes into the movie so he says in his message in his note that he got her original letter but there must be some misunderstanding because no one has lived in the lake house for years and perhaps she meant to leave it at the house down the way and so kate you know sitting there in her truck she writes back that she didn't live in the other house she was that house she didn't live there she lived in the lake house the one with the mailbox where they're putting the mail and also like just forward the mail. You don't have to make a big issue this out is of it. This is such an unnecessary conversation by mail. Like, I would be done with it. I'd be like, nope, I'm done with this conversation. <laughs> this is such a annoying conversation. Like, oh, welcome to your new house. Oh, this house has been for years. All right, I don't need to deal with this. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'd be terrible <laughs> in a romance movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's why you would not have romantic connections. I'd be like, I don't need reason. to deal with this. You'd never get to be together with Sandra Bullock. Or Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Honestly. I know. It's a tough call. Either Either's fine. <laughs> but I'd, yeah, I'd be so done with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, she does, isn't. So she also mentions it's 2006, which seems to imply that maybe he, like, dated the letter or something. I don't know where the date comes from. I actually rewound it and watched it again because I thought I was missing something. So she mentions that it's 2006. And again, I just assumed that he must have dated the letter that he wrote. I thought he was dating Sandra Bullock. hey No, he is not yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back at what appears to be an architectural firm. Uh, He's an architect? Come on. He is an architect, Every yeah. male lead is an architect in, the, in that era of movie slash TV. Yeah, it was just a thing. And she's a doctor. Yeah. All right, great. I'm glad we're hitting all the cliche notes. Absolutely. Uh, I do know, actually, a couple that are a doctor and an architect, because apparently they're living in a 2006 romantic comedy. You should tell them to shape up. (laughs) When I found out that's what they both did, I thought that was hilarious. (laughs) I didn't tell them that. I guess. Your relationship was a joke to me. (laughs) I know. Anyway, so back at this architectural firm, a man's work, his name is Henry, is being evaluated by an older gentleman played by Christopher Plummer. It's just full of people. I I mean, yes, movies usually are. Lots of people in them. (laughs) Okay, Sam. (laughs) So it doesn't seem to go well, but when Henry exits the building, Keanu is standing there and he's surprised to see him. Henry's surprised to see him and pleased and and hugs him. And then as they're talking, Christopher Plummer exits the building, sees them and walks down the road, ignoring them. Henry? 
Henry is the guy, just the guy who was in the architect firm having his work looked at by Christopher Plummer. And Christopher Plummer was like tearing it apart. So you had Christopher Plummer tearing apart some random guy named Henry who we have not seen heretofore in the movie. Correct, but you're just about to learn who Henry okay. is in my next Great. sentence. All right, because I got lost there. For I thought Henry was Keanu. I thought we found his name was Henry because we don't know his name yet. Apparently, I said back at what appears to be the architectural firm, a man's work. His name is Henry. Which why would I say anything other than Keanu standing? I don't there? know, Danielle. Keanu is a man, and he's the only man you've mentioned thus far. Well, he'll have a name shortly because apparently we learn it. At some okay, point. great. Sorry, <laughs> this is all very confusing, mostly because of pronouns. <laughs> Henry is just a random blonde dude. He's not Keanu. And he comes out and he's hugging Keanu. Like, obviously, he knows him. And it turns out that these two men are brothers, Henry and Keanu. And Christopher Plummer is their father. Oh, boy. This is all kinds of good family dynamics. (laughs) Yes. So Keanu, it turns out, is basically the prodigal son and is off making his own money with less fancy architecture. Um, He's, like, doing developments and stuff. He's sold himself out. And he is left because his father is an angsty jerk face. So his father's like <laughs> an architectural artiste and kind of like, I just, I'm Absolutely. doing, you know, housing developments because I actually want to make some money and not suffer. I think he probably could make a lot of money with his father, but he's like, nah, I don't want to work with my dad. <laughs> I mean, that's also very fair. So that night, Keanu deciding to take a letter to Kate, like literally to the new address that was included in her original letter, um, shows up at the address that she left for him, but the address is in development. Like, there's no actual building there. Okay, great. Wonderful. What was their inter- was the interaction literally just them hugging on the sidewalk and Christopher Plummer walking away and that was the whole scene? Yeah, like, oh, I haven't seen you in so long. And it, they give, like, Henry talks about, like, him leaving or whatever. So you get all the context of, like, what's going on. Okay. I was, I was trying to figure out why do they have that scene if nothing happened in it. Yeah. Yeah. You find out that they're brothers. You find out that the other guy is the father. And you find out that he's, like, left and is, happens to be in town, essentially. You did not find out his name. No. Okay, great, great. Oh, wonderful. Not yet. I'm sure it might have been said at some no. point, but I, I still at this, I only wrote it from my perspective, Sam, of not knowing the student's name for like 25 I minutes. I want to movie. maintain the illusion that this movie never tells you the main character's name. That's my, that's my goal. It's entirely possible at some point I will tell you his name because I got tired and I will, I will, I will explain it to you. Okay, when okay I get go there. on. <laughs> so. Uh, he shows up, there's no actual housing development, anything there, and he ends up writing Kate back saying, basically, your address doesn't exist, there's, like, no buildings there, and also, it's 2004, so I don't know what you're talking about with 2006. Oh, they're gonna have a time fight! Time fight! Which sounds like a cool movie from the 80s. (laughs) No, doesn't it? If that doesn't exist, then I'd be very disappointed. (laughs) Are you googling Uh, it? uh, Time fight... Coolest movie of the 80s. <laughs> Do you exist? What? Why is it all required in a Google search? You can just write Time Fight 80s movie. <laughs> There's a Time Fight board game, but not movie. So, Danielle, I think we have an opening. <laughs> so, okay. Kate, as one does, decides to play the game with Keanu, and she looks through a photo box. As one does. <laughs> as one does. Yeah, yes, I like to write letters to a stranger into a time fight. This is a normal thing that humans do. <laughs> this is why I would have been... You said they're getting into a time fight. They are. This is are. why I would have been done after the first letter. I did not want to get sucked into some BS. Like, no, oh, it's 2006. No, oh, it's 2004. I have a picture. <laughs> Sam's oh, not yeah, romantic that's at romantic. all. <laughs> I'm very romantic, Danielle. Why I'm not is, like, patient with BS. <laughs> All right. Anyway, she looks in the photo box. She finds an old photo of her and a bunch of friends playing in the snow with a date on it. And one of those old school, like when the camera has printed the date on everything. And she writes back saying that if he's really in 2004, then he's going to need a scarf, which she puts in the mailbox, a little red scarf, because there's about to be a freak spring snowstorm. Because she remembers it because of how oddly So she's assuming that he is in the past, but the same like date in the past, so not like absolutely isn't that hilarious yeah no I'd be like what, what are you talking about <laughs> like what day is it in 2004 why would, if they're going back in time these letters why on earth do they go back to the exact same day and like how does leap years work this is all nonsense oh and by the way i think it is 2004 yeah, it that was, was a leap year somebody mentions that in one of the <laughs> in the one of the reviews i read and i was like and they apparently just skip it because yeah, it doesn't sync up oh uh, yeah because it was a 2004 it was an 8 2012 yeah the, the fours 
Apparently doesn't exist in the future. Well, the future is dumb. So we do a zoom in, and it's the like most classic, fabulous Keanu shot ever, because he does the shocked face. It's like a reflection in the, the window. It's dark outside, and you see Keanu's like, you know, his classic, like, oh Whoa. my god face as he looks out the window because suddenly snow starts so, to fall. Snow starts to fall just as he's reading the letter. Like the letter causes the snow. Yeah, like totally Wait. is. <laughs> I um I hate everything about this. Like, I am loving the movie for <laughs> how ridiculous would. it is. Like, wh- why is the letter uh, precipitating a snowstorm? Pun intended. I I don't know, Sam. It's just that she knew it was going to happen, apparently, that, <laughs> that day minute, and sent the letter. At that second. Entirely possible. So the next morning, he puts another letter in the box, and you see Kate take one out of the box at the same time, and she, like, pushes – he pushes the flag up. And she pushes the flag down. So as Keanu is walking away, the, he, the flag goes down and it catches his attention. And then it goes back up and he runs back what? to the box. No, his- I, I know what's happening, but no. <laughs> so his note had apparently read, can this be happening? That was it. That's all he wrote. And her note, when he opens the box, says, why not? Uh, <laughs> okay. If you think the time travel Hyperion doesn't make any sense, Danielle, this is way, way, way worse than that. Matt, why why is the flag move at the same time if mm, that doesn't make any sense? Because they're both standing by the mailbox at the but exact same not. time. Sam, like, in if she's in the future periods. and she puts the flag down, it's not going to make it go up in the past or whatever. Sam, it's a magic mailbox. Okay, <laughs> oh, geez. I'm sorry. I forgot about the rules <laughs> of magic mailboxes and how they work. I mean, it's a time-traveling mailbox. Who cares? <laughs> I care, Danielle. This podcast cares. This is what we're here this for. This the problem. <laughs> I'm here to care about the things no one else cares about. So anyway, Kate. All right, fine. Ignore my plight. <laughs> I am going to. I don't have an answer for your questions, right. so I can't help you. So Kate, for reasons, and I don't know why, is about to leave, but the mailbox is the same thing. Like it does the flag thing, and the dog starts to bark at it. The flag going up and down. I hate this sentient time traveling mailbox. It is. I hate that these are two highly rational people who are like, huh, <laughs> weird. We're time traveling. She's just like, oh, <laughs> like, time. This must I like be it. She's it. Like, yeah, sure. Why not? Like, no. <laughs> She does actually, like, doesn't believe in it at first. Like, she's kind of looking around the mailbox thinking, like, somehow there's something going on with it that would cause the letters to, like, disappear and reappear. So she doesn't just, like, accept it immediately. Well, pretty close, because she seems to write, why not back, as if she's like, I got this. So it kind of, like, there's a lot of, I wouldn't say montages, but there's a lot of, like, back and yeah. forth, obviously, that's going on for several, the letters like, back and you know, forth, yeah, months yeah. or whatever. Exactly. So I'm going to like skip over a lot of that. But they start writing regular notes to each other, introducing themselves and discussing the differences in 2004 versus 2006. Not that they use it for anything helpful, like the lottery or well, something. Cool. I mean, that'd but... be cheating. And also, she, so she's like, I'm Kate, and he just said, I'm Leopold, and we're back in that movie now. Yes. Her name exactly is Kate Daniel. That. You have to give me that. <laughs> yeah, but his name, well, you don't know this yet, but his name's not Leopold. We have no proof of that, Daniela. You had to look it up. We don't know what his movie, the name of the movie actually is. Yeah, we're getting there. That's just a, just a little bit further down in my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call him Leo for now. <laughs> okay, well, feel free to do that for the next couple of paragraphs. So they realize because of the paw prints, you know, how they like weren't there, then they were there, that they actually have the same dog, they've decided. What? That's what they decide because the pop, like, she has it. She has a dog. He has he has apparently the same dog. They like describe the dog to each other. They're like, oh my gosh, it's the same dog. I don't know, Sam. I don't know how they both have the same dog at the same time because yes, it does exist simultaneously in two thousand. Well, I mean, a dog would exist in two thousand four if they live long enough. But like, first off, no, it's the same dog at the same time. Like they could both be with the dog at the same time. Except well, you never makes actually see me. them both with the dog yeah, at no, the same it's time. Fine for me because like. If someone's with the dog in 2006, that doesn't preclude someone from having been with that dog somewhere else in 2004. Sure, but the dog still exists in 2006 for, like, Sandra Bullock sure. has a dog in 2004. Oh, wait. And then she also has the dog in 2006, and he has a dog in 2004. So the dog she had in 2004 is the same one that he had in 2004, is what you're saying? They both have in the 2004. same dog. At the same time. Okay, that in was the part I was missing. Okay. And in 2006. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew where you were missing. I just didn't know it's, how to it's explain very, it. It's very complicated. You know, I, I don't envy you. But okay, so here's my other question. They describe the dog. Like, it's a dog. It's got a golden retriever with long fur. Like, they described every golden retriever. I'm assuming it's a golden retriever because every movie uses golden retrievers. Uh, It's 
it's I don't think it's a golden retriever. It's kind of a scruffy dog. All right. He's well, cute. I'm wrong about that then. Maybe it is our unique dog. Okay. I retract my statement. <laughs> Magic time traveling dog. <laughs> I'm on board. Unique. It's just, I don't think it's a retriever. I, again, as I said, I'm super confused by yeah. this dog. Like, is there a past dog and a future dog? And sometimes the dog seems to disappear. Is it not in both places at the same time? It seems to be in both places at the same time. Do they not notice their dog's missing when the dog is missing? Like, are they sharing custody of the dog through 2004, 2006? <laughs> like, when she's at work, is the dog, like, hanging out with Keanu? I don't know. That's very perplexing. <laughs> it is very weird. So basically saving you all of the conversations because I'm not going to go through all of them. He eventually decides to that to best show her the stuff that he loves, like to show him more about himself. Um, he wants to show her like the architecture of the city. And so he decides that he wants her to do like a walking tour and they'll do a walking tour together on the same day, obviously two separate times. So he sends her a map with like when to start and where to go. Thing. If I was Keanu, I would have sent that map and just stayed home and like, she's probably figured it out. <laughs> like, how would she you know? <laughs> Romantic, Sam. The whole point is that they're like walking at the same time, even though they can't walk. Yeah, together. but also like she's not gonna know the difference. <laughs> no, no, she's not. This is oh, Sam. <laughs> seriously, this movie's definitely not made for you. <laughs> not saying it's made for me either, but it's definitely not made for you. <laughs> I'm just being lazy. So they take a time walk. They take a time, time walk, walk together. Uh, Sam. We got time fights. We got time walks. Oh no. <laughs> So they have a voiceover conversation about some of the buildings. And basically, this is something that Alex's dad used to do with him when he was little. He'd take him on walks like this and talk about different architectural features. I'm sure it was thrilling when he was 12. How did they exchange this conversation? Did he just write it all down beforehand and how to read it? Actually, like, when you get to this spot, read line 15 of my notes. No. And so I'm sure it's more like a letter after the fact, for example, and they just merged it together to be okay. more interesting as she's randomly walking around the city. So no, I don't think they're actually Through conversing. Time. Like, this is what the guy's trying to get at. Like, how does this work? Yeah, it's just, it's got to be just a compilation of, of several letters that happened after she took the walk. And maybe he sent her like some information. I don't know. This movie is somehow way more convoluted than serendipity. <laughs> It does remind me of serendipity. <laughs> serendipity a little bit. Serendipity. <laughs> so she admits to him that she wishes they could have done the walk together in real life. And then you see her stop and look at a wall and scrawled on it and spray paint is the phrase, Kate, I'm here with you. Thank you for the lovely Saturday together, which apparently has lasted two years on this wall. Also, no. Also, also. I know, I mean, right? You know, call me naive for time traveling mailbox and slash dog shenanigans, but couldn't they just say, "Hey, on this day in the future, I know what that is. I'll just meet you on the corner of X and Y Street, and we can do this." Like, why does it have to be like if this is his future, Keanu's future? He can just show up at the right day. He knows what day she's going to be there. Gosh, Sam, we'll get there. Jeez, they're just getting to know each other. They're just getting to know each other. Is he dead? I swear, if he's dead, I'll be very upset. No, he's alive. He just made no, a walking tour I mean, dead in the for present, her. not dead in the past. <laughs> Sam, we'll find out he's everything as we go along. <laughs> so we have – no, it's because we they haven't met yet because they're still getting to know each other. So they haven't done that thing where like, you know, when you're like online dating, you're like, oh, do you want to meet? Do you not want to meet? Like, you're, they're still in yeah, the – After like two days of talking, you do that. Like, they've been conversing back and forth through time. These are le- – this is old-fashioned, okay? <laughs> they got to like – Counterpoint, Danielle. He has two years to get to know her before he has to decide whether or not he meets her at that point. He could go there two years later and meet her at that spot. He still knows she's going to be there X day. Like he can't do – like he has to do it in her time, so it would have to be in 2006. Right. Uh, what I'm saying is 2004, right? He has two years in 2006. And, they, and let's say they talk for the entirety of 2004 and 2005 and up and through this, and through 2006 up into the day before the walking tour. He's had two years to get to know her. He could show up on that day knowing that she's doing the walking tour that day. Sam, you're assuming that doesn't happen further in the movie. We're like 20 minutes into the movie. <laughs> he already missed the opportunity for the walking tour. It's already gone. That's my point. Sure, but this is like they're getting to know each other. Sam, they're just getting, getting to know each other. Two years by this point. Like, God. Well, and he's in her 2006 time period. He's known her for two years already. Right, but she is still in her. They just—they've only been conversing in her time. They've only been conversing like. I just, I'm just saying, this is all nonsense. This is all nonsense. <laughs> thing. It's all nonsense. <laughs> yes, they should meet up sooner than they do. However, I'm sorry, but I, I had to Jeez. put my foot down. There'd be no plot if he was like, "Okay, tomorrow, let's meet." And wouldn't that be a better movie? <laughs> I mean, it'd be quicker. Okay, so anyway. 
He wrote the, the graffiti on the wall, which what apparently nonsense, lasted yes. two years. So she just decide- Yes. Yeah, so after all this, she decides to tell her mom, who's very chill about the whole thing, hilariously. And her mom is basically like, oh, he seems like a nice boy. And she's like, mom, like, look at the dates. Like, we're talking through time. And she's like, all oh, the time thing's just a detail, honey. It'll work out. I don't. I love her. That sounds amazing. <laughs> love her, mom. <laughs> hey, mom, I have a time boyfriend. We had a time flight and then a time walk. And now we're time dating. <laughs> Yep, and the mom's like, that's cool. It'll it'll be great. I'm so glad you found somebody, I think this honey. is where the strike comes from. <laughs> These people have a time baby. That time baby is the strike. Yes, and now we've tied it all in. Yes, into the Hyperion universe. It's all one universe, Danielle. <laughs> all time movies actually peel into Hyperion. Oh, what a horrifying thought. Okay, so Keanu, who is named Alex, because I looked it up, because I was like, what the heck? Is Leo, this got it. name? <laughs> Alex is now visiting his dad. I don't know why, since his dad completely ignored him earlier, and it seems like they have a pretty strained relationship. So his dad seems totally fine with him. He's just, like, chatting with him. They're, I think he's probably in his dad's house. And his dad asks him where he's been all these years, and Alex tells him that he was trying to forget him or forgive him, but he didn't succeed, so he decided to come visit, uh, I guess. <laughs> okay, be a dramatic movie. <laughs> They're clearly a little bit contentious, and he drops off. I think the reason he probably visited his dad is because he drops off these architectural plans that he has, like in the tubes. And his father's asks, his father's like, "What are these?" And Alex tells him that they're his own, meaning like his father's. They're they belong to his father because they're the plans for the lake house. His father says, "Oh, I heard a greedy developer bought it." And Alex's like, "Great, I'm gonna go. Here's your plans. Uh, he's Have the a good day." Developer. And so he leaves. Yeah, he's the greedy developer who bought his father's lake house. <laughs> well, his father designed the lake house. It's not his lake house. Yeah, we'll get into the history of the lake house in a little bit. Oh, I, I'm so I can't wait for the history of the lake house and its magic time traveling <laughs> mailbox. <laughs> Yeah, apparently. So, cut to Kate, who is involved in a coding situation at the hospital. Coding as in somebody's dying, not well, coding it. as in <laughs> computer. <laughs> and she manages to save the patient, and she uh, ends up, you know, picking up the mail at the lake house. And she says, "You know, I'm so sorry. It's been a few days. Been super busy lately. I just got off a 30 hour shift." And she had realized, you know, with the excitement of everything going on, that she had let herself get really isolated, and she feels like she's getting desperate. And then you see probably the funniest scene of the entire movie, which she's playing chess with the dog. <laughs> and she's like, which one do you want to use? And the dog like, you know, noses it. And she's like, great. That's a good move. That's a good move. <laughs> if that dog could really play chess, it'd be on tour, man. That's amazing. Yeah. Sandra Bullock just makes the scene so charming. See, I, I told you it was always charismatic. I know. So she admits that Chicago is growing on her, though, because she's enjoying all the walks that he's sending her on, and she loves her job. She just misses the lake house and its trees. So I don't know exactly where the lake house is located. Why does she miss it if she keeps visiting every other day? Because she's not living there anymore, Sam. Is anyone living there? It doesn't seem like it. <laughs> so that, this is like my my question. It's like, <laughs> I'm so confused about why she left the lake house. Felt like she... Went to the. We'll get into a little bit more of how she ended up in the lake house, but I think she left because she was starting her new her new job or something along those lines, or it's just time to move on. I don't know. All right. Well, I guess the commute was too much or something, but I don't buy yeah, it. Yeah, it's possible. It seems like it's pretty far out there. Well, I don't know how far. Maybe like an hour. Let's pretend I was. I just in my head, it's an hour away. <laughs> Everything's an hour away, Danielle. I know it's true. So you see Alex, uh, formerly Leo, formerly Keanu, drinking coffee while looking out the window at newly planted trees because, you know, she just said she really loved the trees at the lake house, but there weren't any trees at the lake house, so he plants in some trees. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Jen, trees notoriously only take about two years to grow. They're very quick. Uh, they're, I mean, they're pretty big trees. I bet they're like 20 plus feet tall. Okay. They're clearly like so middle trees. Petty, like saplings. No, they're like quite quite a bit bigger. All right, all right, fine. That that one gets a pass. Yeah, and then he appears. To, I thought that too. That's why I paid attention to that scene. He then appears to go out and he plants a tree in front of her apartment complex, like where it's going to exist in the future. Not on his property. It. Not on his property. He totally just digs the hole. It's like raining or something, or it's pitch black outside. It's definitely in the middle of the night, and he digs a hole like outside of the complex. I assume where he – it's not where the actual buildings are going, but just outside of it. So and his a tree main there. mode of communication to her outside the magical mailbox is crime. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Graffiti <laughs> and tree vandalism. Yeah. So he plants Vandalism by tree, I should be clear. 
He's planting this tree like off off the sidewalk, you know, like in front of the apartment complex. And then in current times, 2006, Kate is running through the rain in the future, whatever present, and towards the apartment complex. And suddenly a tree tree like appears above no. next to her, whatever. This is not how time rain. works. <laughs> you don't. This isn't like Marty McFly where he like goes back in time, so sort of like fading away in the photo. He doesn't plant a tree two years ago, and then magically the tree appears two years in the future. Why isn't the tree there for the entire two years? Mm. <laughs> well, it's like I don't know, Sam. <laughs> that is <laughs> not good. even you can't implement this complete nonsense. If he planted the tree two years ago, even if it's there in the future, it would still be there for all the intervening time between when he planted it and when she moved in, and two years later or whatever. Yes, but it didn't until now. The day <laughs> he magically to plant appeared it two is years later, here, Sam. <laughs> yes. Is it a magic time traveling tree? Why I, the mailbox? <laughs> fine, it's magic. Why is the tree in the sidewalk <laughs> magic? I don't know, Sam. I didn't think that hard about it. Yeah, you're right. Didn't think it at all about it because it makes no <laughs> sense. Even the most cursory examination of what happened. <laughs> this is why I brought this movie to you because I knew you'd have a lot to say about the time I'm travel. I'm so angry, Daniel. I'm furious. <laughs> I'm absolutely incensed why about I put this it on tree. My list. <laughs> <laughs> this tree has made me madder than anything you've ever brought me before. This includes <laughs> this includes the person with the cat, the cat movie that made no sense with the sequel. <laughs> the cat it was such drama. a good. That's a good K drama. <laughs> uh, I, I should be clear: the one where the person is a, a love cell, not the other one with the talking cat. Whatever like, that did not clear it up. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we do recommend that episode as well, though. <laughs> which one? I, don't, I wasn't clear which one I'm talking about. They're all the same: the cats and the K dramas. I'm going crazy. Then you're making me so mad. I can't see straight. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. There's, uh, a tree. Tree. There's now a tree. <laughs> I don't like that tree. No. <laughs> so back at the lake house, Alex is showing his brother. Um, who apparently has never, had never seen it. I guess they, I don't know the age difference between them and maybe he was too young to remember it. It sounds like he's too young to remember it in the story. I think they left when Alex was about eight years old and he says that the house remains unfinished, that his dad built this house, but couldn't figure out how to make it a home. Like he just structurally made it a beautiful house and Alex wants to do that. He wants to make it a home and he thinks their dad wants him to complete it as well, like secretly deep in the marrow of his bones over underneath his jerky facade. All right. Want to make it a home. Couldn't make it a home. He can make it a house, but not a home, which sounds like some... HGTV nonsense. Uh, but he feels like his dad can't admit that, like, out loud, because then it would make him admit that he can't do something, and his dad's not good at, you know, admitting that he can't do something. He's yeah. perfect. So his brother asks him about Visionary Vanguard, which apparently is an idea that his brother had at one point, which was, I assume, for an architectural firm that he and his brother were going to run together. Okay. And he... Henry is like, you're never going to be happy doing developments. You need to be creative. You know, why don't you think Carter about Visionary Vanguard and maybe we can make it happen. And then it seems to suggest that he tells his brother about Kate, which is amazing to me that all these people are just talking about their time travel romance with random well, other people in their lives. <laughs> Danielle, if you encountered a magic time traveling mailbox and started a time travel romance, would you tell me about it? Uh Probably. Yeah, because I'd be the one person telling you how to, like, really take advantage of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be rational, so yeah. I'd be like, if Sam believes it, then it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, okay, Danielle, don't plant a tree because it's going to magically pop into existence two years from now. So don't do that. <laughs> Gosh, you would hate it if it didn't make sense, the time travel oh, in real life. Yeah, I'd be absolutely furious. <laughs> So Kate, meanwhile, asks if Alex will do her a favor. So she tells him a date and time that she was taking this train, and she left a book behind that belonged to her father that she dearly loved returned, and she was never able to get it back. So she's wondering if Alex, you know, from the from past, from beyond, if he was able, if he could show up that day, grab the book, and put it in the mailbox for her so that she could get that yeah, copy so back she's leave her, on the train. her father. Got it. Okay. Exactly. So now we're using the time travel to our advantage. I approve of this plan. It's It snowballs slowly. So Alex shows up at the station and waits it out, and he sees a woman that he assumes is Kate leave the book behind on a bench after she's making out with her boyfriend, which she kind of watches, you know. Creepy. Curiously. I don't know. He's not being... He's not being creepy. He's just like, oh, she's making out with her boyfriend. That's kind of awkward. Let me learn some techniques. <laughs> Instead of just picking it up on a whim, he grabs it and then runs after the train. And she seems to see him through the window. Like, I don't know. It seem, it's not a very busy uh, train spot. So I imagine he she can't miss the guy running after the train with the book in his hand. <laughs> 
But there's nothing they can do, obviously. The train's just going. So he decides to run off for a train for no reason. Well, he just runs after it. I don't know. He just, fe- I think he feels like connected to her. He's like, your book. I want to see your face. I don't know. It's just a moment, Sam. Okay. All right. Sure. Obviously, he's not going to catch up with the train. A movie, Danielle, is just a collection of moments, right? <laughs> it is, actually. This is exactly what this movie is. So he writes to her saying, I have your book, and one day I will give you the book. <laughs> one day? I'm holding this book hostage until you come and see me in person. <laughs> this part killed me, because she literally says, just stick it in the mailbox if you, you know, if you find it. He finds it, and he's like, one day I'll give this back to you. And I was like, no, it's hers, and it's from her dead dad. Like, stick it in the freaking mailbox, dude. What a putz. What an absolute <laughs> jerk. <laughs> I was really mad about it. Yeah, okay, so this is what you're mad about. You're mad about what they do to each other. I'm mad about how the time travel doesn't make sense. Together, we're mad about everything in this movie. I just don't understand why you would hold up a hostage when she asks you. And she doesn't seem that upset about it. I'd be like, no, I want my book. Like, I've gone two years without this book. That's a huge red flag. <laughs> so he also admits that he saw her and that she's beautiful. And she doesn't seem to have saw her. Any- well, yeah, he saw her, like, well, because he was creepily standing there waiting for her to lose the book. That's true. And then he watched her get on the train, and then he watched her depart in the train, and she looked back and stared at him as he was, like, running down the Did she not the remember way, the like- guy running after her on the train? <laughs> That's just what- this, is- this whole scene does not make sense to me, because she seems to have no recollection of this, even though she clearly looks out the window and looks straight at him. And you think you'd remember some stranger running after a train with the book your father gave you after grieving its loss for two years. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I totally remember that random dude running out the train with the book being like, you forgot your book. Yeah, no, okay. You'd remember that the rest of your life. (laughs) This time travel is the kind of time travel that is just there to make the plot work. Like, it has no rules and it makes no sense and whatever (laughs) the writer wants to happen will happen. Yeah, it's wild. (laughs) Crazy. Anyway. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, we're clear on that. (laughs) Yeah, as long as we're clear that time travel doesn't make any sense. After much back and forth, they finally start discussing maybe meeting, Sam. Hey! Oh, about freaking time, lamos. So as Kate is writing a return letter, she's like, you know, sitting there. She's joking. Oh, call me at this exact date at this time, at this time on this number. And the phone rings. And she's staring at it. She's like, I didn't even put the letter in the mailbox yet. <laughs> yeah, but she will have put the letter in the <laughs> she mailbox. She will. I know. I was like, it's possible. So it's not Alex, apparently. It's Morgan. This is her ex-boyfriend, the one that she was making out with at the train station, who was back in town. Uh Uh-oh. Are you telling me, Danielle, the boys are back in town? The boys back in town. (laughs) Back in town. Yeah. All right. So she meets up with him, and he is literally annoying in like three seconds of meeting him. Why is he even (laughs) there? You'll see. So he cuts her off while they're talking. He disregards her choice in a restaurant. And then he, what he does actually is he goes inside this fancy restaurant. She's like, no, don't, like, don't, we don't, we're not going to be able to eat in there. And he's like, no, it's great. Let's go in. And it turns out that you basically need a reservation like months and months in advance to eat at this restaurant. Oh, so he gets turned he out. right. Yeah, because she lives there. Duh. And he comes out and he's like, this isn't how it was supposed to go. I'm not doing anything right. And he admits that he wants to start things up again with her. Well, he's done a bang-up job of making that clear. <laughs> and Kate reminds him that they broke up for a reason, and it was mostly because he was always way ahead of where he should be. Like, they did for a week, and he'd plan their entire future. He picked out a house for them while she was still in residency. She went to his house for a weekend, and he'd invited the entire town to meet her. And... Is this kind of like... I can't remember that mo- that, that book, the time travel book. There's lots of time travel No, the books, one you yeah. did with the Western. With the dress? Yeah, legend. Legend, there. I knew it was something generic. <laughs> the like, name of the like, town. <laughs> yeah, still generic name for a book and a generic name for a town. All right, so <laughs> it's the same thing where like he, she meets him and like one day like, oh, we have to get married. Yes. And then does he hold her hostage and then she falls in love with him anyway because she's terrible and he's terrible and everyone's terrible? Yeah, and she puts on a feast for the entire town. Yes, Perfect. that's exactly what's happening. Good. I'm glad this is the same movie. Also, how does the Shrek tie into Legend, Danielle? Oh my gosh, Sam. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> it's literally, literally nothing to do with the story. <laughs> no, but we have to bring the multiverse together. Do we? Do we? Uh, we'll, we'll work Listeners, on it. Listeners, <laughs> please let us know how the Shrek ties into Legend. <laughs> Tie everything together. The Shrek and everything. More Shrek, the better. I know. We have several listeners, I know, who have listened to all of the episodes, and I am sure somebody can tie in Legend and the Shrek. Please, you know. Those people are very dedicated. Please tell us. Thank you, people, for being that dedicated. <laughs> yes, we deeply appreciate you. 
All right, fine. Back to this nonsense time travel story. So she mentions that she went for the weekend. He invited the entire town to meet her. And Morgan's like, yeah. And remember, when I invited the entire town, you became very fast friends with one of those townspeople. And apparently she kissed some random guy at that party that she's referencing. Oh. Even though she was dating Morgan. Uh Uh-oh. So cut back to Keanu slash Alex slash Leo slash whatever um <laughs> was, was there more than alex slash leo slash keanu no okay <laughs> <laughs> so he's cheering with his staff that one of their houses in the subdivision is finally complete and he's cheering with the crew that all built it and then you know there's obviously many more houses in the subdivision to build and then he cut to a scene where he's hanging out in the truck with the girl who was yelling at him earlier the woman who was like food and you bought a house on a lake yeah, those deck words. Got it. She clearly has a thing for them. I can't tell if they're dating, though. It's it's very unclear at this point. I think they are dating. Sort sure. of. So she's inviting him out for the night when Jack, that's the name of the dog, um, runs off and he has to go chase after her. If this dog is their meat cute, I swear, Danielle. <laughs> no, it's not. So oh. he finds her. He finds the dog in front of Morgan, who is carrying a box of beer into a house. And Alex offers to help Morgan with the boxes, and oh, Morgan ends no. up- Oh, no. He's the stranger she kisses at the party? You'll find out. No! <laughs> <laughs> and that was my first guess, but I thought, that's too stupid. They're not going to do that. And they're doing it. <laughs> I think you should um, just have base expectations for this movie, Sam. I don't know why you're thinking it's smarter than it is. I, I was really like, oh, she, you know, that's fine. She had some relationship conflict and is going to address that. But no, it was actually him because, of course, she has to remain totally dedicated to him. All right, never mind. Let's go. <laughs> so Morgan ends up inviting him to the party that night. And when he hears that Alex lives out at the lake, he gives him one of his business cards telling him that if he hears of any rentals or anything coming up to let him know because his girlfriend, Kate, has never liked the place in town and they're looking for someplace new after residency. And Alex is startled because it's clearly the Kate that he knows, and the party is for her birthday. So when he realizes all this, like, oh, he finds out her full name and everything, he is like, okay, when's the party? So he's clearly planning to go. Which is a mistake, and the dog does cause the meet cute, Danielle. I mean, not directly, but he planned Indirectly. it all out. Yeah. I mean, the dog, you already said, the dog is a time-traveling whatever that brings the two couples, the two people together. I was, yeah, I know. I, you I, said it, Sam. I, you made I it happen. It's your fault. being right, Danielle. Being right this much is a burden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's your t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should get that tattoo on my back. <laughs> Alex shows up with his half-girlfriend, who apparently named Mona, FYI. And it's a surprise party for Kate, who is super not surprised or thrilled. Well, she's <laughs> surprised. She's not happy. No. She's introduced to various people that she doesn't know, including Alex and Mona. She's introduced by, to Alex through Morgan being like, this is a guy who lives on the lake. He's going to find us a house. She's like, great. Nice to meet you. Moving on. I'm going to, I'm trying to like get out of this party. So at some point during the party, she pushes outside. She's clearly desperate to get some breathing space. And Alex is outside. And he reintroduces himself as one of the people she met. I know. And he starts strong because when they discuss how they're supposed to find her, help her find a lake house, and he tells her she'll move in where he lives and she'll absolutely love it. (laughs) And she's like, okay. (laughs) That is creepy. (laughs) It is. And then he asks her if she's read Persuasion, which is by Jane Austen, which is the book that her dad uh, from her dad that she had left. He could give her the book now. Yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> that would be weird. I uh, like, oh, I found this book and I saw you at the train station the other day. You didn't have to book. say, like, oh, he could just be casually kidding, like, oh, I have this book. I found it at someone else at a train station. I've been reading it. It's really good. Like, oh, that's my book. Oh, what a coincidence. Like, that would have been uh, a great way to surreptitiously meet her and be completely duplicitous. But still. I almost would think that that's creepy. I would be like, are yeah. you stalking me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, very creepy. But what he's doing now is no less creepy. He's time stalking it's her. not, but at least you don't know that he's stalking you. <laughs> Th- is that better? No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> but he's Keanu, so it's like, it seems less like stalking and more just charming. <laughs> you, you can't see the face I'm making right now, Danielle, but it is extremely <laughs> doubtful what you're saying. Stalking's okay <laughs> if it's Keanu. No. It's not, it's not no. okay if it's Keanu, but he just makes it seem less like stalking and more just like... Like, oh my gosh, Kate's here, and I like I feel like I need to see her. He's not like he doesn't follow her the rest of her life. This is like a one off situation. Okay, Daniel. I'm all right, sure. Go on. Let's let's move on before I get angry. 
So she gets kind of like weird, like how, like, yeah, I've read that. It's one of my favorite books. Like, why are you randomly bringing up Stranger on the Porch? And he just tells her that a friend gave it to him recently and he's curious what it's about because he hasn't read it yet. So he was just curious if she had read it. And they bond over some stories and they end up dancing outside to some like low key party music that's coming in through the windows. And then as they're dancing, they kiss. And that's what I wrote in my notes if it makes you feel better. Is this creepy? Thank you, Danielle, because yes, very. <laughs> He has all this extra knowledge on her at this. It's yeah, real weird. Yeah, that's what makes it weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you know that they meet in the future, but she doesn't know. So, uh, oof. But they're interrupted by Morgan and Mona. And Kate is just amazing. She's like, Alex was just telling me about the lake house. Like, she's super chill, even though they literally saw them kissing. <laughs> she is really trying to play this off. Like, girl... You busted. Yeah, she doesn't like, seem embarrassed at all. She's like, yep, Alex is telling me about the lake house. I'm like, Aww, no. No shame. <laughs> so in 2006, Kate realizes after Morgan mentions the kissing guy that Alex is him. She's like, oh my God, that was Alex. <laughs> Gold star, and, Kate. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they have, uh, she ends up writing him to confirm it. And they have like a fake fight about why Alex didn't tell her. But uh, he, obviously, he couldn't tell her in the past. That would have been weird. I mean, it's all weird, Danielle. I know, but you what are like uh, you're not going to believe some dude who's like in 2006 you'll be writing to me in 2004. <laughs> like that's never going to work. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but like, still, I mean, this is why I would avoid those situations to begin with. <laughs> yes, Sam would never be in this movie. We've already established that from day one, Danielle. I would have dropped off the letter. I would even dropped off the letter. I'd just be like, okay, we're done. Bye, house. Yeah, I would probably never have left a note to begin with, yeah, to be exactly. honest. Yeah. Like, I just would have assumed my mail would probably make it to me. And if not, they like they, they can contact my realtor or whoever I have it forwarded. <laughs> yeah. So, while they're having this, like, fake argument via message, it's interrupted by a phone call from Alex's brother, who tells him that their dad's in the hospital. He's had a heart attack. Oh, no. More conflict. Oh, no. Christopher Plummer is... I don't know the dad's name. I'll be honest. Christopher <laughs> I'm Plummer I'm not anybody's name in this movie, Danielle. <laughs> Well, I'm not even sure they really ever said Alex's until much, maybe never, maybe never. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure they never see Christopher Plummer's because they just call him dad. So, so Christopher Plummer is adamant that he had an episode and not a heart attack, which, okay. And he demands coffee and uh, Alex goes and gets it for him. And they have kind of a little moment and Alex ends up telling Kate about the house, how his father had built it for his mother, Mary. Um, and though Mary could have done anything as she was, you know, brilliant, she decided to stay home and raise the kids and help him with his career. Uh, the more famous that his father became, the harder he was to live with, and she eventually left him. Aw, fame tears the family apart. It does. So, But within a year, she'd gotten sick and she passed away. And his father didn't attend the funeral because he said she was dead to him the moment she stepped out of the house. So Harsh. he's a real winner. <laughs> what, what a stand-up family everyone in this family is. I know. Wild. He's terrible. So he ends up staying with his dad for some time in the hospital. And they have a pretty civil conversation, actually, about architecture, which his dad is clearly very passionate about. It's his entire life, um, to the detriment of his children, I imagine. And his wife, and yeah. Yeah, and it's such a love-hate relationship. Uh, meanwhile, back at the hospital, like in modern 2006 times, Kate looks up his dad's chart medically, which I'm sure is super illegal. I was going to say, that's, <laughs> that's some highly unethical behavior to just look up somebody's private – it is a HIPAA violation for sure. Kate looks up his dad's chart and he notices like that today. He dies. He dies. And so she begs someone to take her shift and rushes off to leave a message for Alex um, while – Simultaneously, the doctor calls Alex to let him know that his dad has ended up passing away. So, should we, how does she leave a message for Alex? Are they talking via phone now? No, she left like a note in the box, like, I'm so sorry, because okay. she knows by the time he gets home, he'll know that okay. the dad passed away. And she sends him a copy of his dad mem his dad's memoirs, I think, because that's he was working on them earlier in the story. He's talking to his son about him, about to Alex about them. And apparently at some point they were published in the future. And so she did says that I basically I don't think that you should have to wait to see this. I think this will you okay. know, I was like, how help, she get a copy of his the process. Memoir, yeah. Because yeah. they've already been printed. You see him like going through it and looking at all the pictures and reading it and crying and, you know, dramatic. No, so, <laughs> drama. Let's get back to the time travel. They decide to meet up at up it. They, fi they finally decide to meet, Sam. <laughs> this movie. These people. 
So they decide to meet up at a super fancy restaurant the next day. And Alex makes the reservation for two years in the future, like at this restaurant. There's no way a restaurant would ever allow that. They do. I mean, they look at him like he's crazy, but they totally put it down on the piece of paper. No one ever do that. Never. <laughs> Kate shows up and waits it out. And the staff is rooting for her because apparently this is like a big deal. Like this reservation has been on yeah. the books for two years. You're like, who's going to show up for this reservation? <laughs> they probably got a permission from the manager or something. So, spoiler, Alex does not make it. Because he's dead. There's a, there's a, we don't know that yet, Sam, but Alex just doesn't show up. And there's a really long waiting montage. I mean, I literally fast forwarded through it. It just goes on for this a minute. This movie sounds like it's got a lot of time to fill, which is ironic for a time travel movie. <laughs> it's a slow moving movie. It's like, it's not quick. It's interesting enough, but it's not a fast moving movie. So Alex has no idea why he didn't make it obviously like he feels the need to point that out like i don't know why i wasn't there but let's try again (laughs) sure like after this one attempt kate decides that it can't possibly ever work and she tells him that life's so fleeting that she came to the lake house because a man had died in her arms in a car accident she was looking for answers and somehow she ended up finding keanu or alex and time seemed to hold still and helped heal her but she just realized that with this experience of not meeting him at this restaurant this whole one time Daniel, i tuned out that, that entire sentence <laughs> I like her whole, like, wow, 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 guy down in my arms, came to the lake house, time travel letters, oh, oh let's never meet again. Like, that's all I got from that was, like, she's given up for one attempt. That's literally all I took out Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. No, that's what that's what she says. She's like, I have yeah. to move on. The rest I've, of that I've I just did enough. not listen to. But, yeah, okay, never meet again, which is crazy. You do with time travel. <laughs> well, yeah, who knows she just, how like, this works? Gives up. And, like, who, like, anything could have happened. Like, literally anything that would have prevented him from coming. I've been stood up on dates before. Sometimes I give them a second chance, you know, if they have, like, a good excuse or they, or they say something, right? Like, you know. Or, like, even family, friends or something might not show up to something for one reason or another. Yeah. Like, Get over and it. And you still put up with them. Well, sometimes. So she's basically like, I can't live in the past anymore. I have to live in my, my future, my current life. And she asks him not to write her anymore or find her. And he puts letter after letter in the mailbox and they remain untaken. Oh, so sad. Oh, gosh. I'm so sorry. I, 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 their relationship was so flimsy. I find it hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you don't get all the back and forth of the letters. You know? I mean, but also like they literally had very little in terms of actual connection interaction. It was mostly just the letters. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, cut to the future sometime. Who knows? Weeks? Months? I don't Years. know. But cut to a busy... Yeah, cut to a busy bar. Kate is out with friends. Decade. The Shrike is there. I don't think it's decades. Okay. Cut to a busy bar. Kate is out with her friends and answers a cell phone call. And it's apparently Morgan. He's back in town. He's moving there. The boy is back in town? The boy is back in town. <laughs> and she has decided to give it another go with Morgan. And no! No! <laughs> And they kiss under what looks to be the tree in front of her apartment that Alex planted for her, which, ouch. (laughs) Is she nothing but poor choices? (laughs) Wild, man. Crazy, crazy. So meanwhile, back in 2004, Jack runs off into the woods. That's Jack is the name of the dog. Sure. Jack runs off into the woods while Alex is out walking, and he in no way chases after him. He, like, literally runs about 20 feet and is like, ah, probably running to the future. He'll be fine. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> running to the future there's your t-shirt danielle that's, that's, that's the look he gives the dog like ah, i'm sure he'll I mean, obviously he exists in the future he'll be fine <laughs> maybe i don't though Uh oh so alex looks to be packing up the house and you see him put all the letters he's gotten into a box and he puts those those letters up into the attic so that's apparently where the box came from that she said was there that she I'm never looked she never, that box she never the- looked <laughs> box why if you found a box i would open the box no, in the attic. first thing <laughs> is it a body <laughs> gotta find out before it starts to smell <laughs> i would definitely open it at some point oh uh, this these people are they're robots Danielle. they make no sense <laughs> everything we've ever watched just has robots in it we know that i mean sometimes people make decisions that i don't agree with but at least they're like a decision a human would make <laughs> <laughs> These are decisions no human would make, Danielle. Like, I'm just going to leave Fox in the attic. The this movie bug. must have been written by a computer it just, it, 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 that doesn't understand humans. There's no way. Anyway, so Not within Alex a box sho- in the attic. Come on. <laughs> in the past, I guess, Alex shows up at Morgan's office asking him if he wants to rent a lake house. 
and he passes off the keys to it, telling him it's what Kate wants. And Morgan's like, Wait, how do you know what Kate wants? Great question, man who was kissing my girlfriend. <laughs> and then Jack shows up and apparently it's Morgan's dog now because he just like goes over to Morgan's like, hey, I'm assuming that's how she ended up with the dog. But he also still exists in the past, still exists in the future. I don't know. Does he not have a dog after that moment? I'm not sure. Uh, Okay, sure. I, I cannot waste any more energy on the dog. I'm so mad at people. <laughs> Let's move on. So Alex has decided to start his own firm with his brother. So he, after now that his dad's passed away, and he's like, "Oh, thank God, I can start my own business. I don't have to do developments anymore." And he's fixated. You see him in his office, and he's like fixated on the designs for the lake house. And his brother asks him why, and he says, "It's because it's hers. It's hers." And his brother is like, "Are you still riding with that girl from the future?" And I'm still totally cool with that too. <laughs> And he's like, no, you know, she wanted me to stop. And the brother's like, good, get a real woman. And Alex is like, hey, that's my girl you're talking about. Also, she's real and she's perfect. <laughs> also, you don't know she's perfect because you don't know her. You never had to be like, oh, you. Mm. He knows it in his soul, Sam. Look, I respect that you can form connection with people via, you know, text communication or phone communication. But it's a different story living with somebody or being around them in person for extended periods of time. Like, that's a whole different mode of interaction. Well, right now, he thinks she's perfect. Well, of course. It's, per it's easy to imagine someone's perfect if you know nothing about them. <laughs> they know a lot of letter stuff, Sam. <laughs> I'm not buying it. That's okay. You don't have to. So, meanwhile, back in, I don't know, normal time, Kate is, un it's, time's very loosey-goosey in this. I'm you never think? quite sure where we are. <laughs> Kate's unhappy with Morgan about something. She's storming through the house when she comes across a loose board in the of the floor of the bedroom. And she bangs on it with her foot. And to her surprise, it pops open. The book's in there. The book is in there. Yeah. And this is her townhouse. So, at some point. Sometime Alex broke into her house and Edgar Allan poed that book under the floorboards. <laughs> How is he not a serial killer? <laughs> Wild. Also, how did he know you would find she would find? Like, I would not I be expecting know. anyone to pry up the floorboards in their house. Like over the box yeah. in the attic. Yes, pry up the floorboards. Unlikely. Yeah, it's just uh, perplexing. Robots. Yeah. <laughs> so back in the past, future Alex is now celebrating what looks to be 2006 New Year's. So he has made it to the future. It's been two years. I assume she's in 2008. He's about to die by getting hit by a bus. Maybe. So <laughs> jump ahead, jumping ahead to Valentine's Day, and he's talking to his brother, who I knew it from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> who says he's going to celebrate the day with his girlfriend. And suddenly it strikes Alex that Valentine's Day 2006 is when Kate said she saw that accident. And so he races out to try and stop it. It's unsure. He just has a panicked look on his face. He's like, oh, no, I've got to go. Self-fulfilling prophecy. He runs out into the street in a panic, gets hit by a bus, dies. He dies in her arms. And then this is what precipitates the whole thing. And he just looped forever. In yeah, exactly. It's like Groundhog Day. <laughs> It is. So in the future, she and Morgan are moving in together into a new apartment, and she shows up at Visionary Vanguards with Morgan to talk about the project. And she ends up meeting with Henry, the brother. So this is, this is I assume, 2008. And as they're wrapping up the meeting, she sees a drawing framed on the wall of the lake house. And she's like, oh my gosh, like, I used to live there. That's super cool. And she walks up to it, and she's asking Henry about it. And Henry says that his brother drew it. And she's like, is there a way to get in touch with them? I used to I used to know him. And Henry apologizes and tells her that he actually passed away two years ago, that day, that same day, Valentine's Day, in an accident. Oh, shocking. Oh, no. She's shocked. But suddenly, she's like, wait, where did the accident take place? And then you see her rushing off. And Morgan's racing after her, like, honey, where are you going? What's wrong? But it's two years ago. <laughs> Is he gonna? She can turn around a letter to him to have him stop the accident. So Kate drives back to the lake house yeah. and she stuffs a note in the mailbox. <laughs> also, but this is the thing with it. Okay, we have created a paradox. As if he doesn't go and have the accident, she's not gonna go back to the lake house and not gonna get all the letters. Mm, we've broken the loop, Danielle. She's not gonna know who he is. Yeah. Yep. So she flips up the flag and she stares at it and stares at it and stares at it, clearly hoping against hope that Alex is somehow gonna see it. That exact second. <laughs> yeah, which is weird because he is two years behind her on the same day, so he would be at the accident site. I, right? assume, I don't know what time it is during the day, so maybe he hasn't gotten to the accident site yet. Okay, sure. So she's starting to cry. She's being very dramatic. 
And the note says that she knows why he didn't show up on their date. And it was because he was the one that died in the accident that she was at. That he can't come and find her. That he needs to stay away because she loves him. And she's sobbing next to the box when suddenly the flag goes down. It's Leopold. Yes. You see Alex standing across the plaza, like where he would have died, watching Kate, when suddenly he pulls out the letter and he looks at it. And the voiceover is Kate it? saying, he went to the, I assume he was either at the house. I'm assuming this is before the accident happened. I don't know what time of day she went to see Henry. Okay, I, this is what I'm confused about. Because like, if she's there like minutes before the accident's supposed to happen, trying to give him this letter, render him going to the accident, but he's already at the plot, like... I am very confused about how this, like, the order of events. Right. I have to assume that, like, I don't know, they had their their appointment early in the morning, eight or nine, whatever, you know, and they talked to the architect. She said, oh, he said, oh, it was my brother died. She had the realization. She drove out to the house. So maybe 10, 11 o'clock, and it was lunch-ish time when she saw the accident. So maybe she caught him before he left the house. I don't know, Sam. Okay. That's one, <laughs> my uh, best guess. It's a, it's a real stretch. <laughs> <laughs> So the voiceover has Kate saying to wait two years, like his time, and meet her at the lake house instead, because she'll be there. And back at the lake house, a car pulls up, and Kate stands, and Alex gets out, and they slowly walk towards each other. The he end. pulls her into a kiss, and no one seems concerned about the dog, which she doesn't seem to be there, and they walk into the lake house together. And the her, end. she just decided to cheat on her boyfriend again, because she's the best. Yeah, she totally ditched him, and they're moving in together. Well, that's okay. Like she's, like, she's not out. like she didn't break up with the previous you know, Morgan again. She's now cheating on Morgan <laughs> again without letting him know. And then he's going to be devastated. Oh my gosh, she's the worst. These people are terrible. Like Alex <laughs> kind of gets a pass, but he's a creepy stalker. She awful. <laughs> but she's faded, Sam. She's faded to be with Keanu. Not this BS again. Not this serendipity <laughs> fate nonsense. I do not yeah, accept they do, that. Like, once again, once again, cheat on their partners. <laughs> yeah, no. For fate. Absolutely unconscionable. <laughs> and also, the time travel makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. Do they ever Hate explain the magic tree? Because that's the part that I'm no. still most angry about. Of course they don't explain the magic tree, Sam. Of course they don't explain the magic tree. What was I thinking? <laughs> it's a nice scene, though. She's just drenched in the rain. Suddenly, there's a beautiful tree overhead. <laughs> Look, I'm sure it's very like artistic and like romantic and the music is swelling and all that stuff. But I'd just be like, why are you cheating on your boyfriend again after you got back together with him after cheating on him the first time and you're moving in to get like, no. It doesn't put a lot of faith into your relationship, does it? Right. I mean, I'd be like, uh, I don't think I can trust you to be in my relationship. <laughs> well, they live happily ever after. One well, assumes. at least for another 10 minutes until he's hit by another bus. <laughs> Because he was fated to die, and now she screwed it all this up. This is like Final Destination. She screwed up the thing that <laughs> the death is coming after them. <laughs> well, that's the lake house. Time travel makes somehow less sense than the last time travel thing we did. <laughs> it's amazing, because we've done several time travel things, and n none of them make sense. Yeah, in like um, The Fool on the Hill, they tried some of that kind of stuff, where they, they'd leave things in the past and make it... But at least that was more linear and whimsical, and this is just nonsense. You know what's terrible? Mm -hmm. I think the thing that makes the most sense for time travel that we've done so far is Hyperion. <laughs> and that makes me really mad. <laughs> well, why does it make you mad? Because he puts so much effort into the time mechanics of it? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's amazing. Like, I'm not saying it, it's bulletproof, but at least he put some thought into like how this all works. That's true. I'll give him credit for that, I guess. This movie, literally zero thought to how human <laughs> beings thought. or time travel <laughs> works. Oh, Danielle. Thank you for sharing that. I am... So glad I never saw that movie, but I'm really glad you have told me about it because, wow, what a trove of nonsense. Yeah, I didn't think you'd ever see that movie. That's why I left it on my list. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for sharing. Anytime. Anytime you want me to bring a Sandra Bullock vehicle into this uh, podcast, I'm here for you. It takes a lot for me to like stay away from a Sandra Bullock slash and Keanu movie, who are two people I enjoy in movies a great deal, so... Oofta. I know, we need another Keanu movie. Let's get on it. I can think of a few. You should do one, and I'll do Miss Congeniality 2. Okay, but that's not a Keanu movie. No, but I'll just throw another Sandra Bullock movie in there okay, if you want to okay. do a Keanu one. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's uh, let's put down the list. My list has um, got well, a we need fairly a, need long a break delay on Hyperion. it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, well, that might be a future option for us, so we'll, we'll consider that when, it com when the time comes. Uh, or maybe two years in the future, I've already considered it, Danielle, and I'm sending myself a message back in time not to do that Keanu movie because it'll break our <laughs> podcast. Oh, no. I don't think a, a Keanu movie would never break anyone's podcast. 
<laughs> well, you never know, Dan. That's, I mean, that's just how, nonsense. <laughs> no, maybe our podcast blows up from that episode, and then we become rich and famous, and we have a falling out, we fight, and the money changes us, and we, we find our lives are ruined. <laughs> I was, I'd love to see a situation where we cared enough to fight that strongly. <laughs> right. Yeah, that would be like an almost famous type situation, like the band breaks up or whatever after some big fight. Yeah. I just can't imagine that happening. That'd be hilarious. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I'm glad our friendship ending is hilarious to you. <laughs> it's not that. Just an, <laughs> ending in a dramatic way would be funny. <laughs> All right. Well, if um, if you out there have an explanation for the magic tree, please write it and tell Sam me. Sam desperately needs an answer. I'm for the so magic angry tree. about that tree. I'm going to be not able to sleep tonight. I'm just going to be thinking about that damn tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for you. <laughs> All right. Well, if you have an answer, you can find us at bookretorts.com. You can also tweet Instagram or Facebook us at bookretorts. And until next time, if you are communicating with somebody through time. Maybe do something more interesting than stalk them and their book choices. I I mean, I'm not against somebody stalking me for my book choices. I'm just saying, do something more interesting. Do like, you know, your idea about the lottery was nice. Or maybe do something productive. Yeah, if somebody wants to come from the past slash future and talk to me about books, I'm I'm down. So let's <laughs> feel free to meet up. <laughs> yeah, that's the difference between you and me, Danielle. We have different ambitions when it comes to time travel. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, you can find one of us who will be happy to talk to you for your time travel shenanigans. I'll tell Sam about it, see if he'll believe me. Yeah, all right, and, and vice versa. <laughs> well, until then, or maybe already then, Ooh. bye. <laughs> Take care, everybody. <laughs> Back to Keanu. It jumps around a lot in the beginning. Back to Keanu. Oh, at- I got sirens. You do. I don't know why I started talking. I knew that. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> and that's our outro. Danielle siren noises. Danielle siren noises are the best siren noises. Is this the jingle for your business selling siren noises? <laughs> Because I, because I approve. <laughs> I'm willing to invest. You have my attention. <laughs> I wasn't on board with Danielle siren noise until I heard the jingle. <laughs> That's why, why I'm in marketing. <laughs> He's like, you can't make a business selling siren noises. No one wants to buy those. But then I heard the jingle. I'm like, you know what? You got something uh, there, you kid. You can sell anything to anybody. All right. <laughs>